Welcome back to the Midlife Makeover Show, everyone. You know what? I just have to tell you, I always wanted to have my own show just so I could say, and welcome back to the show. <laughs> Wendy Valentine here. We have a beautiful guest with us today. And let me just tell you a little story. So I get all these guest requests every day, which is amazing. People that want to be on the show. And there was something, and I always like, I'll look at everyone's website, I, I check them out, you know, and there was something about our guest today that I was like, I just felt like so connected to her. She just, uh, she's like a little angel. And so I was like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I want to have her on the show. And one of the reasons I really wanted to have her on the show is I could tell she doesn't keep what I say, like having conversations on the surface just, you know, blah, blah, blah type of chit chat with people, but actually deep, solid, uh, heartful, soulful conversations. So that's what we're going to chat about today. So our guest is uh, a native Floridian, Tracy L. Smoke, grew up riding horses. Ooh, how cool. And climbing citrus trees. Her passion is to encourage others in their faith journey. I love that. In her midlife adventures, she's had four books published in the last two years. You've been busy and doesn't plan to slow down. You go, girl. She loves nature photography and captured the full moon last night and a snail this morning. <laughs> I love snails. They're so cute. Uh, her website about finding hope is Tracy Smoke. That is S-M-O-A-K dot com. Today, we're going to talk about, uh, and this is something I asked Tracy before we started, is like, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, and she's really good about helping you find your purpose and your passion in life and letting faith lead you in that. Uh, but Tracy responded with her new thing is like dare to do. So Tracy, welcome to the show and uh, tell everyone a little bit more of your backstory before you got to be an author and a, a crazy author in the last couple of years. Crazy is the key word here, Wendy. Thank you for having me on your show. I love the energy and the, um, you have the heart of a teacher, a life teacher to share wisdom and not just textbook stuff, but out in the real world, Wendy, this is what's happening kind of knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> um, a little bit about me. I, I grew up in a small hometown and it was the kind of place, well, there were 141 of us that graduated my senior year in high school. Many of us had gone to church preschool together. So if I got in trouble at school, my mom, my dad, and all the neighbors knew before I ever got home. So mm. it was, it was um, deep roots, a, a good sense of identity. Um, when I went away to college, that was the first time I had to learn how to make friends. I had to learn how to read a map. Um, it was scary because I was uprooted from everything that was so familiar. Yeah. After college, I married a gentleman who was a military person. So we traveled quite a bit and I, I followed his career trajectory we had um, two wonderful sons, very mischievous and industrious. <laughs> and um, to give you an idea, we we did a um, fire drill one time because I wanted to make sure if you know something happened, they would be able to get out safely. So the next day, I'm trying to take a nap, and there's like a transom window over the bedroom, and I hear this little like tink, and I'm looking up, and it's like, what in the world? And I see a green yard hose snaking down the window. And it's like, oh, no. Oh, no, they are not. So I ran up the stairs and they had the window open. They couldn't find a rope. So they'd gotten a garden hose. And they tied it around the bed frame. And uh, one of them was getting ready to rappel out the window. <laughs> and it was kind of like. Okay. I love boys. I mean. Um, they're taking this for action, but it's not quite as I had intended. Yeah. <laughs> um, the marriage lasted 20 years and then mm. didn't. 
um, yeah. a lot of um, a lot of agony and soul mm -hmm. searching and spent a few years on my own thought that I had rediscovered myself <laughs> I remarried and that marriage only lasted five years so um you know like we were talking before the show sometimes we would like to say I've done everything right here's my little laurel crown and everyone can do this but I think some of my greatest growth has occurred in devastation where I had to pick myself back up and say that I can mm -hmm. and with help I will and yeah. I love that about your show that you're talking about makeovers but it's not just to be glam girls or guys yeah yep yeah. It's to be the best version of ourselves. Yes. Yeah, you're exactly right. To literally make over your your life. And I had to do that too. I'm like, we, you and I have a lot in common in that sense and marriages and relationships. And and yeah, I think in your greatest breakdowns, uh, you'll find your greatest breakthroughs and you'll find your greatest self. Yeah. What's yeah. What's a time that you had to activate courage to, to overcome an obstacle? I, I, I've been listening to your show mm -hmm. and, and I know some, you know, that things didn't work out and then there yep. was a lot of debt. You know, I thought it was brilliant that you brought on the guest for financial security. Yeah. Um, I know you've had some health challenges. Can, can you, I guess what I'm hoping is out of our time, we're, yeah. We're sharing resources that bring yeah. other people hope that if someone listening is at that point where you're just clinging by your fingernails. Yes, exactly. What, what can you leave with today that helps you stand up and move forward? You know what? I think it's something, it is not something tangible. Mm. It's just not. It would, I mean, if, if it was, we would all be buying it off of Amazon and getting <laughs> delivered in an hour, you know? <laughs> but it's intangible and it's in yourself. It's within you. Um, and I, to me, it was like, I was already down on the dumps. I was already in the worst of the worst of times. So I thought, well, I either stay where I'm at or I make changes in order to make those changes. I, I had to force myself to believe in myself. I had to, I had to have faith in myself. I had to believe that I could actually change my life in the same way. Everybody can, there is no judgment on that. There's not like anyone is restricted. There's that is BS to think like if that you can't, that you can't change your life. Um, so for me, I think that was probably the biggest thing was me stop to, for me to stop making excuses in my life and in every which way I always like, I, like when I, I was just thinking about this yesterday, which is so weird. Um, but I was thinking back of like, why didn't I start my French pastry business? Why didn't I, um, like go back to college, like all these different things. And I'm like, I always had an excuse. Well, the kids, I'll just wait till they graduate from college or, well, um, it's, you know, I'll wait till there's more money in the bank. Well, like it was always just something. And really what it came down to, it was just an excuse for me to not shine my light in the world because I was afraid to like, there's that quote of, um, oh gosh, what's her name? Marion Williamson. Um, Oh God, now I can't think of it. Uh, yeah, it God, I can't think of what I say. But basically it's like what we we think that uh, we're scared of the dark, but we're actually scared of our own light. Oh. Yes, I'll think of the quote here in a minute. It'll pop in my head. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I'll what about you? What about for you? What was it that got you uh, through your breakdown? Uh, I was like, which breakdown? <laughs> Exactly. I think for me, when I lost faith in myself, yeah, I had listened to too many you can'ts, or I had mm. tried and fallen short. Yeah, uh, 
what made the difference for me was my faith in God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if no one else really got me or if no one else really, uh, I, I wouldn't say I, I went unloved, but I felt mm. unloved there, there was a person who had designed me uniquely, unlike any other human being, any era of history. Yeah. It had, had tapped me to do something not for myself, not for headlines, mm -hmm. but, but for the greater good. Right. And, and it was trusting that if I just take one more step, mm -hmm. one more little baby effort, yeah, that it will start moving in a direction of fulfillment. And, and yes. that, that has happened. And, you know, at this point with a little bit of gray, um, a little more than a little midlife makeover. Um, <laughs> I have been sustained through mm -hmm. some really horrible circumstances. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm still standing, you know, just like the, the backdrop behind me. Photography is a love that I've just recently discovered in the last couple mm -hmm. of years. I, I never took a class on it. I yeah. was on yearbook staff in high school and I enjoyed it. And I was a yearbook sponsor when I taught high school for several years, but I didn't, I didn't know I could do it for the, the beauty and fulfillment mm. and joy just because it was there. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think the key word uh, that you said a couple of times was fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And what I'm finding, especially at this time in my life, it is about the fulfillment because that is easier to me to gauge, like when you know whether something is fulfilling to you or not, where it really like warms your heart and soul, right? Last night I was watching um, How to Live to 100 uh, with Dan Butner. Have you seen that? Oh, it's so good. Okay. So it's the study of the blue zones where it's people that have lived to 100 centurions. And then um, one of the blue zones is Okinawa in Japan. <clears throat> and and there's a Japanese term called ikigai. I think it's a I K I G A I, something like that. Ikigai. And basically it's like your purpose, your purpose, your passion, something that brings you fulfillment. And they, they believe that if you do not have ikigai, you will die. Like it's, you'll, you'll, you won't live a long life because you're not doing anything that is fulfilling. And to me, when I look back at like, probably between the ages of 20 and 45 ish. Like I did not have my icky guy. I was doing things. I was a very busy mom. I was doing all sorts of stuff. Um, not to say that I wasn't serving, you know, a purpose or I wasn't doing good things, but it, I wasn't doing anything that was fulfilling for me. And I feel like when you are at midlife and you know, there's a lot of people out there getting a divorce, unfortunately, or their empty nest in a lot of ways, like you've got more time, you've got more time to go take a photography class or, or go do some of those things that like bring you more joy and fulfillment. Yeah. I totally agree. And mm. I think earlier in my life, I thought fulfillment was perhaps a label. Yes. Or mm -hmm. a, a position or mm -hmm. standing in the community. And yeah. I've been reevaluating that lately. I, I told you that I've had a real bad back injury a couple mm -hmm. months ago and I'm I'm still regrouping. So it's mm -hmm. like my usual three days a week at the gym and yoga, you know, came to a crashing halt. Yeah. And even this morning, I mean, I was able to get up and walk around a little bit. I've had some wonderful ladies that have been helping walk mm. my big fat dog, but the one lady <laughs> came this morning and her, um, her father-in-law had just passed and grieving. And I had a book on grief that I've been reading and I just gave her a hug and I gave her the book and I said, maybe this will give you some comfort. Mm -hmm. And then a little while later, um, some gentlemen came because I had an irrigation problem out in the yard. 
and the the one gentleman's walking bent over holding his back so he's in worse shape than I was with my mm. back brace and I had an extra back brace so uh. in my I went in my little closet you know and pulled it out and I said hey try this maybe this will help you you know get through the day but I felt fulfilled yes I was able to see a need yeah what little bit I had it, it was that sense of larger community that mm -hmm. was expansive instead of just what I did or didn't have it was what can be shared yeah it's interesting I was just thinking when you said that about um you know being able to have a need for others and I think sometimes, especially as, as mothers, when the birdies leave the, the nest, you know, and then like, you kind of feel like, does anybody need me anymore? We're so used to, you know, and not to say that we're not still not needed for our children, but it's in a different way. You know, they're becoming adults. And, and I feel like for me personally, like why I wanted to do what I'm doing now and having a show and I've got a book coming out next year and maybe a digital magazine. I'm thinking about it. But anyways, um, to me, it's like, wow, I can actually serve more. I can do more, right? Wait, what was it you had said earlier? Oh, dare to do. <laughs> and that's really what it comes down to is that if you dare to do, dare to be who you truly are and who you are deep down inside. So let me ask you a question. How does someone uncover that? How do they peel back those layers to figure out what it is that their, their icky guy, their purpose, their passion, their love? That's a great question. And it's mm. one I'm still working on. I, yeah. I think when we were talking about the word need, sometimes yeah. that can be a minefield, especially mm -hmm. as women, because yep. we want to secure our, our mates. We want to secure our children, our extended family. And, and sometimes we can get buried in other people's needs and mm -hmm. we get lost. It's like, who, who am I? Well, I want to take a photography class, but junior's got football and Susie's yep. got ballet and, you know, somebody has got to manage the household. So I yeah. think one of the things I'm trying to cue into more now is where is joy? Where yeah. is that spontaneous laughter no obligation, no sense of duty. And I, I think I emailed you a couple of weeks ago when mm. you know, we were scheduling. Yeah. Up, and I have been, I've had some trouble with insomnia. So I'm waking up mm. at like 1 a.m. and I just decided I'm going to embrace this. I'm not going to mm. get angry or frustrated. Mm. So the other night there was a beautiful clear sky with a full moon. So I decided to get up. I didn't take off my pajamas. I just put on my fluffy white terry cloth robe. <laughs> I put on flip flops because, you know, Florida, it's still warm. And <laughs> I put my camera, which is just my cell phone, nothing fancy. Yeah. I'm walking out in the yard trying to get the best angle on this gorgeous moon. Uh, and then I couldn't quite get the right angle because no yeah. tree is in the way. So I go up the sidewalk and then I'm like, looking either way. It's like, if my neighbors see me, what are they going to? think and I thought oh, they'll just think she's at it again or they'll think you know it's like a ghostly visitation or something <laughs> then I walk up on the sidewalk and I mean I'm right I'm basking in <laughs> this gorgeous starlight it's quiet there's not another soul around or probably even awake and I just start laughing out loud so hard because it was freeing it was yeah. because I wanted to there were, there were no obligations. No one was even noticing. And I hope they didn't. <laughs> but you know, I, I think like you're saying for that joy, you had talked about um, a French pastry. And yeah. Do you find that in your cooking or what just makes you happy? Yeah. I mean, that's a good question. I think for everyone out there, you do have to ask yourself what makes you happy, what brings you fulfillment. And I to me, it's like, I feel like you don't know unless you try, like you probably didn't know that you would enjoy photography as much as you do. I didn't know I would love podcasting as much as I do. I didn't know. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like so much fun. And so you don't really know unless you try. And, um, I'll get back to your question, 
But what I was going to say is, is like, sometimes we, we constant, like we're, fear will stop us from moving forward because what we concentrate on is the things that didn't work out in the past. Yes. We, we, we concentrate on those breakdowns, but instead look back at your past. And, and I know everyone has this look back at the ways that you did have a breakthrough where you did get back up off the floor, where you did like even the smallest of things, no matter what it was like, oh my gosh, you actually got everything on your grocery list that day. <laughs> or I don't know, like the simplest things, but then congratulate yourself on that. Praise yourself for that, that you actually did that and remind yourself of the good things that you do and the amazing things that you do. Don't concentrate on what you think of as failures. And in my opinion, there are no failures. There are no mistakes in life. There's only retakes. You can at any time go, okay, that didn't work out. Let me, let me go this way. Let me try this way. Right. So yeah, for me, what makes me happy? Um, I'm realizing the more and more that I explore in my life and I, you know, um, try different things. I love connecting with people. I've always known that, but I really like doing it on a larger scale. And I was scared of that. That was one of my fears. I was like, oh my gosh, what if somebody doesn't like me? What? <laughs> now I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> um, I love traveling. I love being near the water. Um, just like looking at you right now. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, she's got this gorgeous picture of this waterfall back behind her. And it's so soothing. Water is very soothing to me. It like really just ah, makes me feel nice and calm. Um, what brings me happiness and joy fulfillment would be sleep. I like my sleep now. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I love it so much that I refuse to worry. Uh, like I used to be one of those who would wake up at two or three in the morning and I would be up because I would be worried about the dumbest things that I cannot control in my life. So now I'm so picky about that, that I'm like, uh, uh, not going to worry. I'm going back to sleep. Um, so yeah. Uh, and I love, I love different foods. I love different cultures. I've, I, I've really enjoyed like just, you know, I'll be in Portugal on Friday and, I love meeting uh, different people from all over the world. It's so cool just to learn different ways of doing and being. I think that's like the coolest thing. What about you? What, what makes you happy? Um, I think what I'm enjoying right now is that I'm I'm recalibrating my expectations. Mm. I've always been the mm. type of person that set goals and I would work, you know, step by step to achieve them. And I'm at this space right now where I don't have a goal mm. and I'm having to learn to be. Yeah. And what occurred to me the yeah. other day is that I've been so focused on whatever the destination is. Yeah. That I've missed some of the journey. Mm hmm. And, and what I'm trying to do now is settle a little bit more inside myself mm. to listen better yeah to be more observant of the people around me mm -hmm. and to really experience where I am yeah you know, you just to be asked, very present and mindful yeah you mm -hmm. had asked about the writing in four books in two years but the really funny thing is one of the books is a novel that I wrote 11 years ago that I, I had an editor who was going to write a contract and then the ebook thing started and she got downsized. Then I got a literary agent. He tried for six months. He wrote me a Dear Tracy letter. <laughs> so then I threw that manuscript in the closet literally for 10 years. Wow. And then just in 2021, I, I left my teaching profession and I said, well, now I can go to a fall writers conference. I had put that off for years and I had another book I was working on. Um, it's called Refuge of Grace, Finding Your Safe Place. Mm -hmm. But it was when we were coming back from COVID, I was in a traditional public school classroom 
and we were we were teaching and we were revolving yeah. door with quarantines. Um, we were trying to make the technology work. That's how I learned Zoom. That's how I learned <laughs> Docs. That's how I learned Google Slides. Um, but what I what I'm realizing is the the places that I thought were failures actually mm. were um like like temporary stops to create yeah. resources in a reservoir. Yes. So one of the jobs I had, this is funny, I got mm -hmm. a job at a military installation as a technical editor. I <laughs> am not technical. I don't like it. I didn't like being in a little cubicle. I didn't like the military environment. I don't know what I was thinking when I took that job. <laughs> but it paid well and it had prestige. And so yep. I was the outside things and not listening to my heart yeah I had to go and learn how to do word processing and layout and every one of those skills has been necessary in preparing manuscripts for consideration by a publisher so was it a dead-end job well I didn't particularly enjoy it and I didn't last very long yeah but was it fruitful later and did it equip me for something that would be my icky whatever you say yeah yeah so i would just share with you know with the folks listening that sometimes what we think is a dead end mm -hmm. really it's just equipping if we're daring enough to take the next detour yeah not just camp out and say woe is me ah uh. I love what you said, because it kind of goes back to what you're saying, like right now where you're at in your life is just trying to be present, enjoy um, being where you are, enjoying the journey, trusting the journey, having faith in the journey. And, you know, Steve Jobs once said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. Right. So as you look back at your life and sometimes you might look at a dot if you will, in your life and go, that didn't work out, but really it did. Cause if you look at the next dot and the next dot and the next dot, those dots wouldn't have happened that order. If that quote unquote did not work out. Right. And sometimes, uh, it's funny. I was just thinking about this the other day too. I knew we were so connected. Um, but even like after my divorce, um, when I was broke and unemployed and yada, yada, yada. And I had, I was like, okay, I've got to get a job. I've got to figure out, like, got to make over my midlife, if you will. And, um, I took a job that I didn't love in a state that I don't love Illinois. <laughs> Be nice. Be nice. <laughs> I, know, I can't, I can't do it. But you also have to think too. And, and what I did for myself is say, Wendy, it's just temporary. This is just to get you to that next dot in your life. And it was, and I, and that, that brought me hope, which I know that's like the main word that's on, on the front of your website, right? That brought me hope knowing like, okay, let me just get through this. And yes, just like with your job, like it wasn't for me, the, the, you know, Illinois was not for me. Um, but I was able to get out of debt I was able to, uh, to start this podcast, like after all was said and done and it got me to where I am right now. So for that, I am incredibly, incredibly grateful. And I'm so glad I made the decision to take this job, to take that job and to move to Illinois temporarily. So sometimes no matter where you are at in life, sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you might have to take, take on something that you may not be that crazy about, but if it gets you to where you really want to be, then go for it. That's, that's my opinion. I agree. I, yeah. I think there's a lot to be said for doing the best everywhere we are. Yeah. Um, carrying that integrity forward. I know when I taught for more than a decade, I thought that was my icky. <laughs> yeah, your icky guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I had some beautiful experiences with some wonderful coworkers and students. I learned yeah. so much. But what I didn't realize at the time is that there was a much deeper layer. That being, I was immersed in literature. Mm from mm. the masters for years yeah all the kinds of things about craft and and how to structure a novel 
or mm. how to develop nonfiction, I was in training myself and I just thought I was the teacher, but yeah. I really was the student. So I think if we can look where we are right now, even mm -hmm. if it's maybe not exactly where we want to be, or, or maybe we don't feel completely fulfilled, I think if we if we look at it as a rich source of material for growth, mm -hmm. that we'll see things that are blessings coming our way that are actually equipping us for the next step. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Like sometimes you don't see it when you're right there where it's staring at you in the face. Sometimes you don't actually notice it right away. And but you will like, it'll all of a sudden be like, Oh, that's why I had that crappy relationship or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and you know what too? It's like, I feel like it's, this is a great time in life to really sit back and in through all the good times and the bad times, like, what did you learn? Like, what is, how has it made you into the person you are today? Right. And, and how you can change those things. If there are things that you don't like, then you can change those things. What, um, question for you, what did you, what were your lessons from your marriages? Um, to have compassion, mm. um, not only on another person who has a history and has, um, perhaps a lot of tragedy too, yeah. but have compassion on myself that sometimes I can't be what the other person needs. Yeah. And you come to a point where you have to accept that. Yeah. You know, to your absolute best. Yeah. Then um, if it's not going to work, you, you I learned that trying to destroy myself to be something I wasn't, wasn't mm -hmm. going to make anything else better. Yep. But I also have learned in this uh, journey of healing and of growth, that other people are essential. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean ro romantic mm -hmm. people because yep. sometimes that just becomes a distraction. I mean, yep. it can be a glorious, beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> I have learned that, identifying safe people and identifying caring people yeah. have helped me become stronger, have shown mm -hmm. me that I am trustworthy. Just mm -hmm. you know, like we met, I don't even mm -hmm. really know how we met. Except I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a lady, she was helping me locate podcasts because I wanted mm -hmm. to share information about the writing and yeah. I wanted to grow it. Well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do a podcast. And your name <laughs> came up on that, I think, because of the the idea of making ourselves anew and mm -hmm. growing and celebrating. And mm -hmm. when I saw your contact information, there was just a phone number and it said, give us a message. So it's like, well, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yes. You were so cute. <laughs> well, and just that you're affirming me today in my journey to write and that I would have something that's shareable. Yeah. That, that's healing. And yeah. You wouldn't say that if you didn't believe it because right. you have a responsibility to your audience. So mm -hmm. I guess that's a very long winded way of saying in order for us to grow and change, we have to mm -hmm. embrace other people. We have mm. to make ourselves vulnerable to people who have yeah. a skill set or a network or wisdom and life experiences that yeah. they can help coach us. It's not that we rely on them. We we yep. still have to do our our work. But if we just stay in the same place with the same surrounding, we're probably not going to get any different results. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What is it? Uh, Einstein said, "Why well, I'm like full of quotes today. <laughs> You're in your literature. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's all these books back behind me. Um, <laughs> but you, you can't solve a problem with the same level of mind that created it. Oh yeah. So you do literally have to change your mind if you want to change your life. You do. And that, I mean, that's for me, that's what I had to do. I was like, all right, these thoughts and these 
beliefs and these behaviors are not working for me, Wendy. Like you have to get real with yourself, right? You know what I mean? You have to be like, girl, uh, like go talk to yourself in the mirror. Like if you have to be like, listen here, like we got to make some changes, you know, like, and, and, and give yourself some grace to be patient with yourself. Like you were talking about the journey of the healing it's healing. Like as you're, it's not easy. It is not easy to change your life. Right. But to me, I find it even more challenging and difficult by not changing your life, by staying right where you are. To me, that's more challenging because you're not being true to yourself. You're not being fulfilled. Just like in the Japanese with the icky guy again, the, the icky guy, um, like no icky guy, you'll die without your icky guy. Like you have to be true to yourself. You have to fulfill your purpose. And why not? Like I just, like more and more I think about it, um, you know, who was the actor that just passed away the other day? Jesus Jones, uh, from friends, Matthew Perry, Matthew Perry, but you don't like, mean, we're reminded all the time to me, it sounds crazy, but death is a motivator to live. Like we get reminded all the time, like, oh my God, so-and-so just passed away or so-and-so got cancer or so-and-so only has like a month left to live. Like, oh my God, like, what are you waiting on? Like, I used to have this magnet on my refrigerator that would say, what are you waiting for? And I look at it every day and I'm like sitting there drinking my coffee, staring at it. You know, I'm like, yes, Wendy, what are you waiting for? Like it's now or never. And I just think like every single person, kind of what you talked about a while back about being so unique and having so many gifts and strengths and talents. And deep down, I feel like we all know what they are. They might, we might use them in different ways. Like you might use your, your gifts and your strengths, like in different ways, like photography, with writing, like uh, with speaking, all sorts of different ways that you can use that. But deep down, we know what our gifts and strengths are. We have to remind ourselves of our gifts and strengths because I feel myself included. Like I, I lost, I, I lost, I, I forgot my gifts and strengths. And from being in a marriage where it was kind of like, okay, don't shine your light, Wendy, you're shining too brightly. Um, and then running a household and kids and soccer practice and blah, 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 blah. I just push them to the side. And you have to remind yourself of your gifts and your strengths. And, and then from that, then go try on all sorts of different things in life to see what you like and what brings fulfillment and using those gifts and strengths. Yeah. I will mm -hmm. tell you from my teaching background, um, I had the dream of being a teacher when I was in mm -hmm. college. But yeah. I already had a business major and I wanted, I was fast tracked for an early graduation. So I left that dream behind and I thought, mm. well, it's too late. It's too expensive. You know, I, I'll never be a teacher. My husband's mm. moving too much, too many duty stations. Now we have children, whatever. I went back to school when I was 38 years old. Oh, good for I you. My teaching degree. And I can remember, it's one of my fondest memories. I can remember sitting at the kitchen table. I had my homework out. I was doing my classwork and both of my sons were on either side of the dining table doing their homework. So uh, what I was trying to model was resilience, that yeah. this is important, but we can do it. And yeah. I, I think a clue for people like you're saying that maybe you've lost track of what brought you joy. Mm -hmm. The masters of education program, they talk about the, the different um, intelligences, Howard Gardner, but there's linguistic, there's spatial, there's artistic, there's tactile, there's like social, emotional. Um, and I was like, that was a light bulb. It's like, whoa, yeah. I need to identify all these giftings in my classroom and then yep. I actually deployed them. I had the student mm -hmm. who was gifted in technology. That person did the video or the computer. I mm -hmm. had students that were artistic. They did the bulletin board. I had students who were leaders and they would organize the groups. Um, but if, if you go back to your mm -hmm. early childhood, what did people tell you you did? 
yeah what, what do you remember you know was it playing with puppies was it that you were fascinated with medical things was it that you stood on a stool and helped your grandmother in the kitchen was it that you were outside playing soccer um go to those things that weren't scripted yeah that will kind of be a clue to lead you to to what your innate joy is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and another clue but it's like on the opposite side for me resentment is a big Mm. caution light because if I'm feeling resentful towards someone it's not their fault right yeah it's it's my issue either Mm -hmm. I'm giving more than I should give or I'm being forced into a mold that I haven't had the courage to say no to yeah or I'm riding somebody else's coattails because I'm yeah. afraid to step out myself yeah. and, and wear the full responsibility. So yep. I think as we're listening, if if you're feeling resentment, step back a little bit and reflect, where can you step up for ownership and yep. instead of um, sort of Instead of pointing the finger at somebody else. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. Cause I did that. I mean, I'll admit I, I would do that. And I would, that was part of my excuse. I did think of that quote by Marianne Williamson, um, which is so appropriate for this time right now. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. So true. But I'll tell you what, once you step into the light. No, (laughs) once you step into your light, like, oh my God, it feels so good. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then you kind of wonder like, what was I so scared about? It's not that big of a deal, but you just have to give yourself permission to step into the light and to be true to yourself and just live your life. Like this is it. Like there's Dang it. Another quote. Um, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? Right. Like you, this is it. Like, it's not like, okay, you get another go around here, like get another chance, you know, depending on what you believe, but whatever, no judgment. But I mean, this is, this is it. Like, go for it. And I think, I think midlife is the perfect time because we're not changing diapers. Most likely, we're not, you know, like there's this time in our life when we, we've got more time to ourselves and we can go ahead and take a stand and say, you know what, I'm going to do this for me. I'm like, I want to do this and just go for it. And the cool thing is there's so many great resources out there. So many people that are, that we can lean on for help and support. And I mean, it's, 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 it amazes me. I mean, you just grab your phone and it's like between podcasts and books and <laughs> like social media, I mean, there are tons of help out there. So we can't use that as an excuse, right? Like, oh, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. We'll go to YouTube. I mean, you'll figure it out. <laughs> well, that's back to our dare to do. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. When you find your light, it doesn't stop there. Because- no frighten that part of community or neighborhood or workplace that draws others. And you know, for folks who are feeling stuck today, it doesn't cost a lot of money. It's Mm -hmm. just one step. And for example, when I started taking photographs a couple of years ago, mine is nature art. So I'm fortunate to be in just a beautiful part of central Florida. So there's lakes and trees and Ah. it's just everywhere I go, I see beauty, but I wanted to capture the sunrise over this beach. Well, not Mm. beach, there's like a bridge and there's a lake. And when you look out over the lake, there's this ridge of cypress trees with this real moody moss and the way the sun would rise up, it was just gorgeous. So Mm. I, but to get to the bridge, you had to park your car a distance and then you had to walk through grass. Well, Mm. if I wanted to capture the sunrise, I had to be there at like 620 in the morning when it's pitch dark and there's cars going over the bridge and I'm walking. So it was a little bit dangerous because they couldn't necessarily see me. And if I'm out of my car by myself, I didn't want some wackadoodle driving by 
you know, so there was an yeah. element of risk. We're not talking huge risk. Yeah. So I got there in the dark. I found a place to park. I walked, you know, along and I was there for 20 or 30 minutes and it was cold. And these mosquitoes mm. were going, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> and then I decided, well, I needed to go under the bridge so that I could lay on the embankment and then I could get the perfect frame. Mm. And then I think, well, gosh, what if, what if there's somebody under the bridge, you know, like when you're a little kid and it's like the <laughs> boogeyman under the bed, you know, it's dark. <laughs> There's just these series of little, I know. many fears, many, yeah. many hurdles. Mm-hmm. And I had to talk myself through yep. each one, assess the risk, assess my capabilities and ask myself, do you dare to go one more step? Yes. Do you dare to yeah. go one more step? Yeah. Yes. So I ended up getting I love that. fabulous sunrise pictures I'll, I'll email you one when we're done or if people go to my website it's on it's in the book living water to refresh your soul oh. I mean that's just one little example for a series of photographs but when you when I saw those pictures come back you know the next time I wanted to adventure a little bit and take a picture I was so much bolder mm-hmm. I love that Yeah. You almost learn to become your own, your own coach. You know, you become your own best friend and you just might sound crazy, but you got to talk to yourself. (laughs) Yes. I love that. That is so great. Um, so what's next for you? I'm honestly not sure right this minute. That's awesome. I'm kind of in a holding pattern. Um, I'm really trying to share the message of the books that are now published and that's mm-hmm. a whole different skill set yeah but I'm, I'm kind of inquiring it's like lord you know you have mm-hmm. blessed me with some grand adventures the last couple of years things i never really dreamed were possible mm-hmm. but i don't i don't know what's next and- see i love that you said that because i think <laughs> As a, I mean, as a society, we're so trained to like, you must know every single thing. And if it's not like absolutely clear, then you're just, you know, you're not with it. But actually I feel like it becomes more clear as you get closer. And if you just have somewhat of an idea, even if it's a little blurry, you know, it's totally okay. But as you keep stepping towards that picture, it becomes more and more clear. When you go to Portugal, are, mm-hmm. are you working on like dual goals or, I mean, I know it's the pleasure part of the travel, but how about you? Yeah, actually, well, it's all kind of combined, you know, um, and I've been, I was over there just a few months ago. So I have a condo over in Portugal, but that's actually like, I'm definitely my own guinea pig and um, I'm continuing to make over my life, right? And I'll, I'll not, I won't stop. Like I'll keep going and keep going. Cause it's, you know, a, a comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing will ever grow there. So you do have to continue to push yourself in the kindest of ways. So like, what else can we do here? What else can we do? And sometimes it just, I mean, last week, so weird. I woke up like super early and all of a sudden I had this idea. I was like, I'm going to start my own, my, ma- my own magazine. I was like, that's weird a magazine. I was like, I don't know where that came from. (laughs) I was like, okay. So now that's my, my new project between the podcast, um, an online magazine. And then also I have the book too. So, but you know, I wouldn't going back to what I was saying earlier, if you'd asked me five years ago, I wouldn't have thought, okay, I'm gonna have a magazine and then a podcast. And then I'm going to have this book. I, I don't know, but I'm just like taking it one little step at a time. Are you yeah. going to have your magazine, the same theme as far yep. as okay. Yep. It'll be called the, the midlifer magazine. Okay. Yeah. So well, your mission is very clear. All yeah. not stated as such your mission yeah. is how can we grow? How can we explore? Mm-hmm. How can we enjoy every moment that we have? Yes. Yeah. You're exactly right. And I think for people out there that might be confused at what direction to go, just 
get clear on, on your mission, right. On, on what brings you fulfillment and just, just go with the flow. Just like that Creek back behind you. (laughs) (laughs) Go with the flow water. (laughs) Yes. So, uh, Tracy smoke.com S M O A k.com right um tell us a little bit about your books all right so i have two nature art photography books nice. both are faith-based they have bible passages and prayers but oh. it's um full color so it's just where you're kind of invited into the artwork and then let that speak to you the yeah. um, the novel is who brought the dog to church it's <laughs> funny so it's hilarious cute. it's about these friends in a small town community and all the antics they pull but there are some deeper sub themes one mm-hmm. is dealing with grief and loss and one is the issue of domestic violence mm-hmm. um, I trained and volunteered for a while as an advocate for survivors of domestic violence mm-hmm. and it's across all age groups all socioeconomic all ethnicities mm-hmm. And it, in a lot of ways, it's a hidden cancer where mm-hmm. people are suffering silently. Yeah. So there's no graphic violence, but I wanted to bring open the conversation mm. that uh, there's more awareness. And, and if you know someone's suffering, how you engage them and their heart to just say, I'm, I'm not judging. Mm-hmm. What can I do? How, how can I help you? Mm-hmm. So the um, the fourth book that just released is um, a collection of devotions. It's a Bible study, and it's about where do we find safety when we mm-hmm. look at the Bible and we look at um, the Old and New Testament, the people that we look mm-hmm. up to for heroes, how, how did they overcome hardship? Yeah. What was it that enabled them to keep going when other people quit? Mm-hmm. So that and I blog every week on hope and I love to feature um, like there have been some cancer survivors or oh. if anyone I, I don't do subscriptions just because I know people's mailboxes get bombarded but <laughs> it's, it's at my website and if anyone just you know you're just looking for a feel-good moment or just something to kind of ponder a deeper aspect of life I, I love sharing whatever ideas come to mind Oh, you're so awesome. You've you've got your icky guy. Thank you. <laughs> your icky guy. You'll have to be everyone's gonna be like looking that up afterwards. Like, what is that? Well, thank you so much. Any um any final words of encouragement you would like to leave with the listeners today? I would just say two words. You can. Ah. Today. You can start today. Mm-hmm. Baby step. Yeah, That's you're so right. you can start today baby stops (laughs) and i'll 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 add three more words go for it (laughs) thank you for being such a gracious host i've really enjoyed our time and i look forward to hearing how things are going in portugal and the magazine and just thanks for what you do to encourage oh thank you tracy i'm so glad we met me too okay bye-bye